So I just had a subscriber ask me why I don't do time under tension reps, such as really slow controlled reps as a part of my bodybuilding routine. Train the muscles, not the joints. Now, of course, this person must be new because from time to time, I do use slow repetitions in my workouts, but it's important for you to know, okay? If you see me not doing something in my workouts, it's not because I'm just randomly doing whatever I feel like. My techniques are a culmination of 30 years of experience and training and watching and observing of what works for me, okay? So there's a reason why I don't use time under tension reps as far as going super slow all the time. Because the thing is, when you're doing isometric contractions as opposed to isotonic contractions, different muscle fibers come into play and you will get different results. And that's something that I realized. I tried long periods of time with doing isometric type contractions, whereas I'm, I'm almost stable, like holding a chin up for a period of a minute or uh, doing just one rep over a period of 30 seconds or 15 seconds. And I just basically experiment with these super long reps. And I did this for long periods of time. And I noticed that I got a certain result, but not the same result that I got when I concentrated on performing as many repetitions as possible within a certain period of time. There's this obsession with being really strict with reps and stuff because, you know, a lot of people are trying to measure themselves based on how strict they can go. You know, there's always somebody playing a certain game. One person saying, I'm the strongest, I can lift the most amount of weight. The other guy's saying, I can go deeper than you can, or I can stretch the rep out more than you can. And then another person's playing the game of how strict am I compared to you? That means I'm better because I'm going super strict in my rep. But once you start casting aside all these ways of measuring, then you start to become a true scientist and you start to say, okay, what's actually working to build muscle in my system, okay? So what I started to notice was when I was doing these super slow reps, I started to shrink. And not only that, I started to recruit totally different muscles than what I wanted to recruit. such as when I was doing super slow bench presses. Although here and there I would get a different pump and it would be an interesting variation on the bench press. When I was doing super slow bench presses, I wasn't hitting my chest as much as I was hitting my front delt. So this is something to consider. You will hit different muscle groups when you're doing super slow reps in compound movements, right? The same thing with the squat. When I started squatting with super slow reps, I started to notice my lower back started to take a much bigger beating than my legs because this can also come into play with your form and how you lift and what your natural movement pattern is so this will be different from person to person so another person that stays more straight up and down in a squat movement they may notice that their legs are the only thing that fatigue during super slow reps so this is something that you need to take into consideration how you're built and how you lift will also change what gets hit when you train okay so no matter what way you're doing the exercise if you're built a certain way you will hit different muscle groups and you will have to change these variables or adjust these variables to hit the muscle groups that you want so one thing i did notice is that when you're doing a rep at a certain speed, it will hit certain muscle groups. But then when you change that rep speed, different muscle groups or different muscle fibers will come into play. There are studies to support that when you're doing a little bit of a faster rep, a more explosive rep, you will hit those fast twitch fibers more so than when you're doing super slow reps. So when you're doing slow reps, I'm not against them. I do them from time to time. 
but they are not my main workout technique. My main workout technique is a little bit of a faster rep. Of course, I'd suggest that you go slower on the way down, but at the same time, you wanna make sure that you're exploding those reps out of the bottom. And, and you have to understand that contracting a muscle is a different type of stimulus than just holding it in a semi-contracted position for long periods of time isometrically. Okay, so you will cause a different adaptation. Sure, you might uh, increase endurance, you might increase blood flow, you might hit some endurance fibers, but you're not necessarily hitting some of the other fibers as well. So what I found was that I get more results overall in bodybuilding when I do a bit of a faster repetition. Uh, something that has to do with actually lifting or contracting the muscle. Stretch and contraction seems to get better results than just holding isometrically in one spot. I'm not saying that we're talking about isometric contraction here, but you have to understand that when you're slow down the rep significantly you are moving towards more of an isometric contraction than say an explosive rep Now you have to believe everything I'm saying because I have glasses on. That means I'm smart, see? It's like the old 1970s stereotype. You're smart if you have glasses on, right? So anyway, these are my findings with my own training. This is what happened with me. When I trained with super slow reps, I found that I got significantly less results when it came down to certain muscle fibers. Uh, it was great for getting a pump in the area, but at the same time, I started to recruit different muscles than I wanted. So for instance, when I do arm curl super slow, what happens, it's almost like it accentuates a certain area of the contraction that doesn't seem to be, let's just say this, it's almost like there's a certain sticking point and getting stuck on that sticking point doesn't necessarily help the bicep brachii hit failure, right? So you have to be aware of what muscles are you contracting and sometimes when you're going too strict or too slow, different muscles start to come into play where you're basically making the weak link even weaker. Let's just put it that way, okay? When you make the weak link even weaker, you're not necessarily hitting the muscles that you wanna hit with more intensity. So if you ask yourself, why does Jason do a certain technique or why is he not doing a certain technique, okay? Why am I not doing a certain technique? It's usually because I found it does not work for me. Uh, and like I said, I've had three decades to experiment with different techniques and sometimes there have been there have been a lot of techniques that have been thrown my way and I was like, oh, this is a secret. Like, for instance, with slow reps, I did months and months on end of just nothing but slow reps to see if they really work. Because what I noticed was that when I did slow reps the first time, I got extremely sore. So it definitely was hitting different muscle fibers than I was used to hitting. So I thought, okay, this is another tool in the toolbox. This is something worth doing for a period of time. But at the same time, is this the end all be all to training? Is this the secret? Is this what I need to do in order to gain more muscle? So I tried it out for several months and what ended up happening was that I started to actually shrink down a bit. It was almost like I was doing a little bit too much of an endurance workout. Now that's me, that doesn't mean that's you. So I highly encourage you to try these reps out and find out and find out really, is, is this really the thing for you? Because some people respond different than others. And one thing I found was that some guys, they, they do the slow rep thing, super high intensity, really slow reps and slow eccentrics and all this. And I find that they, they got a lot of results from it. So it just depends on your build. It depends on how you're built. It depends on your joint ratios. And it also depends on your muscle fiber content and your nervous system, how everything's all factored together. You have to take all of this stuff into consideration when you're considering doing a different technique in your bodybuilding program, right? Don't just train a certain way just because somebody tells you to train that way, but find out, is this a technique that works for you? Because like I said, I've seen lots of people respond to different techniques and then not respond to other techniques. So it really is based on the individual. It's also important to understand 
that there are different forms of intensity in training. Okay, so one form of intensity for an energetic system might be a slow rep. So say you're doing a slow rep, you know, you get a really deep burn. That burn is, is just so much more extreme. Whereas when you're doing a faster rep, everybody knows that the risk of injury goes up. Well, why is that? It's because the tension in the muscle that's generated when you stop that momentum is a lot harder on the fibrous tissue and the connective tissue in the body. Now, of course, you have to be careful with this because too much of the stress can tear a muscle, but if you give just enough, you will actually stimulate more growth in the muscle. So it's about finding that happy medium. So when you're doing heavier and heavier weights, that's why I say you want to do the heavier weights a lot slower than the lighter weights. The lighter weights, you can get away with a little bit more faster repetitions. I've found that there's a difference in intensity when you contract a muscle 30 times as opposed to just contracting it five times. Now, like I said, it might burn because you're, you're contracting really slow and you're going through the movement and the time under tension is the same. But at the same time, I find there's another thing that's added to the whole movement, another variable when you actually contract the muscle and relax it, because that's really what a muscle is designed to do. It's meant to contract and move, right? Whenever a muscle contracts, that's when there is more breakdown in the muscle and the more contractions you can get in a set, it only makes sense that there would be more muscular breakdown right? Because whenever you're accelerating, that's when uh, little tears happen in the muscle, because we all know that when this is extreme, then you get a massive tear, right? So understanding this law of physics of you know, the damage happens because the contraction happens, there's this acceleration that happens, then you start to use the perfect amount of force to stimulate the muscle, but not so much that you actually tear the muscle. So thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get a hold of me, just go to naturalandbodybuilding.com. And if you want to support this channel, just go to patreon.com, uh, naturalandbodybuilding, and the link is down below. And uh, take care for now. Yeah.